Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Sofia Savkina and I work on marketing team here at this bank technologies. I am so glad you could be here today. We are excited to share with you best practices we have learned about um, designing software applications that allow transportation agencies to improve ridership and quality of service. Today's webinar will be led by Peter Shashkin. Peter is a program manager at Isban Technologies and oversees the development of Transit IQ, our cloud-based solution for transit agencies. Peter will explain our philosophy on how our solutions improve public transit, allow you measure performance, save your agency time and resources, and help you leverage open data to improve quality of service. We'd like for this webinar to be as interactive as possible, so please use the question box on the lower right side of your screen to ask any questions you might have, and we will be sure to address them. With that, I'll hand it over to Peter. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to see you all here, uh, and it is great to talk about this very exciting topic of uh, public transit service, how we can make it better, how we can improve it in, in, in this 21st century. We have so many opportunities. Uh, to simplify things and uh, to make them efficient uh, and we're going to talk about them and uh, obviously about our philosophy uh, with which, which we uh, develop. So briefly who we are, we are East Bank Technologies, we are located in Washington DC uh, and we are a custom software development company, we engaged in multiple uh, industries uh, multiple technological stacks and we do many different things. Um, why uh, us and why public transit? We have our own uh, solution called Transit IQ which is designed for public transit agencies to make things run better over there and we also uh, public transit users ourselves. We write we ride buses and we ride trains and we use it ev every day and we also understand the, uh, the, the, the public transit is actually a future of increasing the urbanizing world today. Public transit is not easy. Uh, it, it, has, uh, set, uh, it has its own set of challenges uh, and so, which sometimes impossible or hard to resolve and we understand that sometimes it's a balancing act uh, for, for for those organizations, but we hope and we know actually that with the technology uh, many of them can be solved by uh, software solutions and we're going to talk about that. So IT landscape is changing rapidly and we're proud to be the, the company that, uh, that is well aware of all those upcoming technologies and we also work with uh, public transit agencies and that makes us very experienced in system integration in the world of public transit. And uh, since we know uh, how cloud technology works and we are customers of bus and rail system ourselves, we combine that all that experience together and produce something that we call Transit IQ today. Um, briefly, uh, you probably don't know anything about us, but you probably using our software if you are using Newsweek and Washington Post or Comcast or Microsoft products. Uh, not all of them, but some of them obviously. So we, uh, our experience is pretty broad. And before we begin, um, I would like to stop for a moment and un really understand what actually our main goal is and what exactly we're trying to achieve. Um, is it that we want to make customers happier or do we want the bus actually come on schedule? So what we want to do? Uh, in our opinion, the main goal is that we want to improve ridership. We want people to use more buses and less cars and uh, use all kinds of public transit facilities, whether it's buses, trains, or maybe maybe bicycles or car share systems or something like, something like that. And we discovered that if we want to make ridership better, we, we need to think about trust. It's all about trust. If we have trust between public transit agency and its customers, now this is the moment when we actually increase ridership. And uh, a little bit later in this presentation, I will give you a precise example how actually it works. Briefly, 
uh, about Transit IQ, um, it is obviously a, a solution that we sell, but uh, in addition to that, it is it's a philosophy, it's, it's a set of best practices that we developed on top of our experiences working with public transit organizations. Those are fundamental principles that we use to build effective systems that ensures community involvement and that actually makes things run smoother and better. It is not just about making bus arrive on time, it's also about making or producing the ecosystem where government public partnership would flourish to keep public transit a constantly improving environment. This is the we need to build an environment where actually ridership uh, increases uh, and people use more and more uh, buses and rails. But fundamentally, we are business intelligence. That's the most important thing. Uh, it's not everything, but it is important. Um, without business intelligence, we will not be able to make informed decisions and change the way we do business. Also, for those uh, organizations that do not have good data. We kind of came up with very uh, innovative and great approach uh, to collect uh, data from the buses using smartphones and we are going to talk about that as well. That also include, includes various applications for public transit users such as mobile applications uh, for somebody standing on the street and bus stop and waiting for the bus or trip planners that would be used, for example, in, in kiosks somewhere in the hotel and things of that nature. And API for external developers. API stands for Application Programming Interface. And in simple words, that's an ability for people outside of your organizations to build applications on top of your data. And this is very important uh, component and I'm going to explain a little bit more how that particular thing improves uh, quality of service. Now, another important thing to understand, life of government is complicated, it's not easy, it's, you cannot just go to government and tell them what to do. Uh, when we introduce some new capability, we don't want to make things harder. Obviously, technology in, evolves, it's getting more and more complicated, but that doesn't necessarily mean that life of the businesses should be more complicated. Actually, should be simplified, easier, more reliable. Uh, and uh, this is exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. Now, um, obviously, the way we do not want to make uh, life of public transit agency more complicated is uh, fill it with IT issues. So we don't want them to purchase and, and maintain hardware, hire system administrators, deal with patches and upgrades and all that stuff. We want to let public transit agency do their work, deal with, uh, deal with buses, schedules, bus operators. Uh, they already have uh, problems or issues that they need to work every day. This is safety, infrastructure, relationships with unions and personnel. We saw more of it, and we want we don't want to make it more complicated with I uh, like for example with IT issues. Now that I need to purchase servers, I need to hire a system administrator. Now I need to have some kind of person who would be. Uh, dealing with IT issues one way or the other. Uh, we want public transit agencies actually to focus on the business, not, not, to, not to IT. And uh, in order to do that, we developed our philosophy of uh, three pillars of trust. And this is the trust that builds uh, better ridership in, in, in every city. So first of all, good service. Everybody understands what good service is. It's a uh, bus coming on time, for example. Uh, now, after that, once you have good service, you need to have good data about the service. Uh, you need to collect right information so you can uh, see discrepancies, anomalies, and make inform informed decisions. And the third is, you need to make this data accessible from everywhere, and ideally uh, for everyone. Uh, let me go back a little. Uh, I just uh, th Those are three pillars. And 
uh, let me briefly explain why those three and why they are important. I just can give you an example. Imagine that you have good service and everything is great. Your buses come on, on time, on schedule, uh, but you, uh, if you don't collect good information about the service, or even if you collect good information, but you don't provide access to this information to your customers, they will they they are less likely to use the service because they don't know about it, and uh, they don't know if bus actually arrive on time. They don't know if buses arrive in the next three or five minutes, so they are less likely to use that, and that damage the relationship between customer and public transit service and would damage the ridership in general. So if we want to make, to improve ridership, good service is not enough. You also need to provide good information about the service and make it available to customers. And that would improve it. And on, on the other hand, if your service is bad for whatever reason, doesn't work, bus is always late, but if you collect good information, if you allow your customers to provide your feedback about late buses, for example, you see the data and you can make informed decision. You can find the root of the problem. And those two pillars on the right will make the first pillar better. So all of a sudden, just because you have right good data and good access to data, you will be able to make a good service. Uh, in brief, what uh, service quality means, um, that is uh, evaluation of on-time performance in using business intelligence tools like graphs and charts and looking for root cause, uh, doing the root cause analysis. Uh, analyze bus bunching, the big issue for cities today when buses clump together on the route. Uh, we heard that this, actually, this is actually the worst uh, problems in public transit today. And the ability to compare with as other transportation systems because you, there are things that you cannot fix. You cannot fix traffic. You cannot fix construction. Uh, but is my um, uh, performance better or worse than national average? So we should be able to answer this question. Uh, quality of the data. Sometimes with quality of the data, public transit agencies, they feel abandoned. So they have buses. They can do something with buses. They can look at the reports but they usually uh, cannot do anything about data collection. So data collection is done by some black box and you cannot do anything about it. Uh, but uh, though if, if, if data is collected incorrectly, you have gaps, you have anomalies, things fall, fall off all the time, those things are fixable. And we also, at some point, we thought that we also couldn't do anything about it. Every, every agency that we were dealing with in the past uh, had these problems. And we think that we found that solution that we can collect information using smartphones when we place a smartphone on the bus and collect the data. Uh, another thing, how to improve quality of the data is to make this data available within your organization to different roles. Usually, when you are responsible for bus performance, you provide reports to bus performance people, and that's it. Okay, but if you allow your mayor uh, to look at the at, at the reports, the uh, maintenance people, and and other all within, our, within our organization, they will see the data differently. They will look at the data from different perspective, and they will uncover other issues. And when they uncover other issues, you will be able to make, take an action. And when you take an action, you fix things, you fix data, you fix service, and you that would fix ridership ultimately. And similar is data transparency when you expose data to, to public and uh, some in many cases it's even better because in this case you expose data to people who are usually developers and they look at their data, raw data, and they uh, are even better quality control for you and this is like free stuff. They fix those, they notice and they fix uh, your problems for free. It's a great asset. That improves quality of data. And uh, you need to make data accessible to your customers. Typically, we think about uh, mobile applications, but it's also trip planners for tourists that visit your city. And, and uh, trip planner as like a keyword that you can place in hotels and other locations. Also, applications that you provide within your organization uh, that would uh, allow them to see like real time data about about buses and I, I'm going to show some of them in in uh, 10 minutes or something like that. 
uh, and also uh, let external developers build applications for you. Though so there are lots of people they love public transit and they are just eager to build more and more and more apps and in various unimaginable and unimaginable ways. So we need to give them uh, that opportunity and that's a huge uh, money server that also improved uh, uh, ridership as well. Um, again, Transit IQ, we are not trying to be a system that will replace everything for everyone. We are complementary to existing solutions and uh, I can explain how it works. Uh, first of all, you uh, you or some some other transit agency, they they would typically have the device deployed on the bus. This is one of those black boxes that I was talking about, and uh, that uh, device would submit data to something called AVL system. It's automatic vehicle location, and from there you collect some additional information and you see some basic reporting. Uh, what uh, uh, the problems that you typically have with those kinds of solutions is uh, related to hosting, how difficult it is, it is to maintain and pay for it, and uh, is frequency is good enough for your customer to see if bus actually arriving in real time, do we have mobile applications even for those customers, and uh, how good the data is, and do you have access to this data from, from outside for other people, do you have better reporting and, and, and stuff like that. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, bad data is everywhere. It's everywhere, and bad data affects uh, ridership. I can give you an example, and uh, for example, just um, this is the data from one of the major tra uh, metropolitan area here, here in the United States, uh, which I grabbed literally uh, two days ago. Uh, the chart on, on the left. Uh, Show is, shows the number of buses uh, on the route. To, uh, only 71% of the buses actually reporting something useful. Uh, 80, uh, 80 buses that on the route do not report anything at all. So imagine a person that waiting on, on, on the bus stop and uh, without ability to know when exactly this bus is coming. And I'm talking about buses not reporting anything. I'm not even talking about buses that reporting late or reporting incorrect information or all kinds of anomalies. So if you combine all, all that together, it's quite possible only a third of the buses report anything useful. And that is damaging. And uh, a slide, uh, table on the right, which looks kind of boring, but it's huge. So if you look at the col column on the left, this is number of seconds uh, for the black box that uh, located on the bus that reports information to the AVL. So you see the uh, uh, row on, on the top, 780 minutes, uh, 80 seconds between reports. So if you have bus reporting like every once every 15 minutes, it doesn't make any sense to, to use this information for any kind of reporting. And the uh, column on the right is uh, uh, the uh, interval, time interval for used by, by our smartphones that we develop on the same bus, which is, as you see, much, much better. Uh, so. Uh, how everything works. So we have uh, existing uh, data collection system and we deploy, we have Transit IQ working in the cloud in the Microsoft Azure and we get this information from AVL system in case it's available actually and we uh, store that in the cloud in, re in, in real time. And if we have great data source, we are immediately able to deploy mobile application for customers which are branded for the agency, provide reports, trip planners for city, uh, city residents and, and visitors and arrival screens and all kinds of things just based on the fact that we ex ex exported this data on uh, like every several seconds. And obviously the API. We we allow external developers to access this wealth of information so that they can further improve it and build additional applications uh, for uh, for citizens. 
and uh, if data quality is not good, and imagine that data quality is bad. So if data quality is, is bad, that reporting that we have on the left doesn't make any sense. So we, we created this great ecosystem of applications and reports, but if your data is bad, what, what, what's the use of it? Uh, and for those situations, we developed our own solution where we just put the smartphone on the bus, and with smartphone, we just send data directly into the cloud. Uh, in, into our Transit IQ cloud servers. Uh, with that, it's cheap, effective, uh, reliable, and low laden latency. Is it hard to do that? It is not. You just grab the phone and you put this in the bus. This is one of the examples that we do here in Washington, D.C. Uh, briefly, I uh, wanted to talk about uh, uh, analysis of the data we do in the cloud versus analysis that's usually done in, inside the organization. Um, why two actually coexist and why uh, one is sometimes better than the other one is when you deploy, when you use your, your business intelligence in the cloud, this is unbiased reporting. So in, in many cases, uh, when developed are oh, uh, where reports always develop inside the organization, it is uh, prone to doctoring. Unfortunately, people just trying to identify no noise, and they will they they don't see this as a service problem. It's subjective, so depending on how many people actually worked on the report, it, it just become distorted. We we see we saw this so many times, and when we say you, when you send the data to the cloud, when you send the data to Transit IQ. It is not distorted. It's just we, we, we display what we see. Uh, and that is absolutely essential that you know the actual truth. We saw some cases when general manager of transit agency would get rosy and green reports uh, and uh, open newspaper next time when, where, where his uh, agency, public transit agency, would be bashed by, by, by magazines of service problems. And, because they are biased, unfortunately. Not all reports you can uh, outsource to software as a service, obviously, but uh, you need to do that. Also, no servers to purchase. It's all running in the cloud by us, and uh, it's subscription-based service. Uh, the same report that we're showing to you, those reports are used by other transit agencies in the, in the, in the country, which means that we can actually compare performance of different we can different agencies and actually compare with uh, national average, for example. And this way we can actually determine if one agency is better than the other uh, in terms of some metric, for example, like on-time performance. Um, we are not afraid of data. Uh, it's cloud, we're scalable, uh, we, we collect information one every three seconds. If we want to call, collect information three times every second, we don't care. We can we can do that. We can process all that. And constant improvement. Uh, we work work with multiple transit agencies, and they all add in some reports. And we as as we enhance and improve those reports, we make them available for everyone. So as you see our system, you see more and more reports every time. Uh, so what kind of information, what kind of reporting where we are able to derive from real-time positions of, of the bus? Uh, just going to, I'm not going to tell you everything, just some uh, most interesting examples. Um, business intelligence dashboard when you can see system health. So which bus is actually not reporting at all or reporting with delays or delay of the bus on the route. You can see worst offenders, you can see preview of the history. Uh, uh, of the worst, like click for example for the worst route and see what 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 was happening yesterday and day before yesterday, things of that nature. Uh, in other words, quickly identify the problems. Uh, also, we have huge part of our business intelligence dedicated to uh, anomaly detection. Uh, anomaly detection that we see with the buses deployed on, on not the buses, the boxes that deployed on the bus. Uh, those things that actually report bus position and delay information. And uh, on, on this screen you see delayed jumps, something like we call delayed jumps, when your bus report like it's delayed one minute, 
two minutes, one minute, one minute, and all of a sudden it says, oh, I'm delayed 30 minutes. And after that, in after, minute after that, it says, oh, I, I'm delayed one minute. So those are the, the, the anomalies that we are, are able to detect and also present as a list of worst offenders. That usually means that some algorithm or device hardware works incorrectly on the bus. And we can tell that. And you can look at the anomalies throughout the history. You can specify the bus and the time period. And we can show the chart what, what was happening. Are there any anomalies happening historically on this bus? Also, uh, delete delay validation, some of those boxes in the bus, they all, are able to produce the delay information. Those are the things that are typically displayed on the screens on the bus stops, like bus is nine minutes delay, delayed. It is not always correct. Like for example, in this case, on, on the bottom, at the bottom you see two lines. One is dark green, another one is light green. And the light green at the top, it, it is showing the delay information that we collected from from the box. And the dark green is our own delay information that we calculated. And uh, as you see, uh, our calculation, transit IQ calculation of the delay is more consistent than the one uh, we collect from the bus system in general. So another, wor another way to troubleshoot accuracy of the data. It is important because this is the data you are showing to your customer. And uh, if when your customers see that a bus is actually nine minutes delayed and it, it arrives at the bus stop next minute, you're probably going to have the call to customer service and you, somebody needs to enter this case and the ticket in uh, CRM and run the workflow. It's a, it's a burden. We, we want to fix that. A large portion of our system also is dedicated to delays and we are trying to visualize, visualize that in every way possible. In this, in this case, uh, that is the picture of delays in uh, Houston, uh, Texas. The bigger the bubble, the, the longer the delay on, on this bus stop. Um, another one is called public transit coverage. Um, those are things are useful for city planners, maybe mayor, uh, where you can see with the color which areas of the city actually are more uh, accessible to available for public transit, which are less. So, for example, uh, people who live in green areas, they have better access to public transit than those who live in yellow and, and red. And you can do deeper analysis. You can click on this area and you can research why this is green, why this is yellow and stuff like that. I think it's very, very useful. And actually, uh, one of the I.O. partners that you can do use. Uh, bus benching, we understand that's a huge issue, and we also are trying to vi visualize uh, visualize that problem using charts and stuff on the map. And in this case, we see that bus benching actually happening more in the city. Again, bigger bubble, the worse the bunch actually. Uh, uh, of course, when you you can drill down from pretty much every chart and see the history of the bus and replay bus from a week ago. It, that stuff typically useful for customer service where somebody calls and complains, oh, m bus actually didn't arrive or skipped the bus stop and I can go and actually look what was happening one, one, one week ago. I don't need to go and ask driver and take his word. I can just look and check. Uh, interactive uh, map for average speed. This is uh, the chart that was actually requested and we developed the chart for one of the transit agencies. They wanted to see uh, where bus is actually the uh, slowest on the route uh, during different time periods. Uh, why they needed this chart is they, they wanted to play with bus stop placements to make sure that uh, they can minimize those uh, areas where bus is actually slow. They wanted to maintain this with them of bus rails to, to bus stops, and this is very interactive. Bus bunching monitoring, uh, uh, again, bus bunching is a, it's a huge, huge, huge issue. And uh, this is the applications that typically run on a large screen hanging on the wall. 
and you can pick the route that you're most interested in and you can configure the uh, alerts and when buses come too close together they start blinking and uh, this is the point when you can get in touch with those drivers and ask them to slow down or speed up to, to maintain the distance between the buses. Uh, another fun report that we created is that we, from bus position history, we are trying to uh, evaluate the states of the bus, whether it's in the garage and repairs or it's on the route and revenue service or it's somewhere else. Uh, is it parked? Is it at the bus stop? And uh, we're trying to split that into buckets and uh, see uh, throughout the vehicles how different those vehicles are and can compare, for example, the time in the garage spent with one bus versus the average or versus other buses and create some kind of ratings. Uh, for example, uh, here here, uh, the top one rating on the uh, top right corner, you will see this vehicle sorted by the miles that, that way that they went uh, through a certain period of time, or as a, um, sorted through the number of uh, hours they spent or days in the garage or in repairs on the service. Another set of reports is about health trends. Is it getting better or getting worse? Is this, um, kind of obvious you want to see if the situation is getting better or getting worse and you can look at through the uh, buses that do not report anything or they are consist consistently late or they are consistently on time and you want to see if it's getting better or worse. Um, a few words about API application programming interface, why this is important to expose this data to external developers. Um, what, what it actually means. Uh, that means that you create uh, the portal for, which is developer friendly. You expose the, your data in certain way, uh, which we call REST services. Uh, this is a way for external application developers who are very used to that and can easily create applications using that. And this is the portal which would uh, uh, have uh, code samples and we would issue the key that they can use to access this data and we can throttle them and we can report on how this data is used and who is using that and how much. Uh, also hackathons, uh, great trend today, uh, create events and uh, around the uh, the application program interface, but you can attract different, you can you can attract hackers or sub application developers to get in touch, to get into your data and build applications. And typically, this is something that's happening in one huge rooms where a bunch of developers just come and try to create the applications right there using using the, the data. And you can promote those apps in the portal. And the most important thing is uh, API is great feedback channel. Uh, they are the people who are going to do this free quality control for your data. They will see the inconsistencies, they will see the problems, and they will tell you. Uh, and when you know about them, you will fix those things, and that will make the data better, and that will make service better. And once you have service data, service better, ridership is going to be better. A great feature to promote public transit, actually. Okay, I'm practically done. I just want to, uh, I, I want to be quick. I don't want to take a lot of your time. Um, just wanted to mention four of conclusions that we learned uh, from doing that and hope that you will uh, use that too because we think it's valuable. First of all, transparency is your friend. Don't, don't be afraid of that. This is not just a f uh, fashion trend. We, we heard about this, actually helps. It actually makes life easier for everyone. Uh, uh, easy access of data bring awareness. And, and when you have this ubiquity of the data, you attract more writers, more people know about this, the more they use public transit. Also, that approach, fundamental approach, promotes feedback. You, you attract more feedback. Users don't stay silent. They actually tell what's, what's happening. That improves quality. And again, as I mentioned, brings more, more riders. Second, 
uh, unbiased reporting today reporting is distorted pretty much everywhere it's a political issue uh, when it becomes political it gets distorted uh, things are swept under the carpet all the time uh, we are not against the reporting that happening inside the organization this is something that obviously needs to happen but that needs to be complemented by unbiased reporting from the cloud and this is what we provide uh, we provide outsourcing of this reporting function function that allows us to be honest and compare apples to apples uh, you can consider this as like a second opinion if you if you already have your internal reporting you can use ours as validation of what you have um, more imports and those reports that we have, I'm pretty sure the half of them you never expected to have, which means that you will be able to uncover and see your service differently. You will be able to uncover unexpected problems. So now it's an opportunity to make things better, some, some new tools for you to make things better, tools that you never expected to have. And also um, better awareness. Again, if you have better awareness about the data, about the service in, in, in your reports, that means that you can make service better and, all, again, translates in more readers, more better readership. Now, bad data, can we fix it? It's like uh, the phrase from the cartoon and uh, you can uh, anticipate the answer. Yes, we can. We thought it was scary black box. It is not scary black box. It is fixable. It is not difficult. In 21st century, it is not difficult anymore. Anymore, You can do it. You can fix the bad data. Um, it's better if you cannot fix bad data, uh, if you think it's your fate, if you cannot do anything about it, if you feel that you cannot do anything about it, you are going to lose riders. Data needs to be improved. It has to be fixed. It has to be fixed and we think that we know how to do it. Okay. Don't invest in infrastructure and system administrators. This, this is a cloud message. Again, this is something you weren't able to do five years ago, or 10, 10 years ago. Now it's becoming the mainstream. It's cheaper that way. It's, it's more expensive. It's, uh, it's less expensive. It is more reliable. Uh, it's easier. That allows you to focus on your business problems, not on IT. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, saving scale and simplicity. Um, that means that we can, uh, the public transit agency actually needs to focus on what's more important, which means making it more enjoyable for people who live in the city and make them, uh, get them off their cars and actually make them use public transit more. And this is what public transit agency needs to focus on. And we think that with our approach with our philosophy and with our solution, we can make actually this happen. This is my last slide. I would like to thank you. I'm very passionate about public transit. I'm very grateful for all that joined us today, talk about those things. And uh, this is our contact information. If you want to learn more, please get in touch with us. And uh, if you have questions, this is the contact information. Please feel free to send the email or call us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming, joining us today. Again, it was uh, East Bank Technologies with uh, Peter Shashkin talking about the Transit IQ, our cloud solution that helps make transit better. Please email us with questions. Uh, reach out at um, sales at Thank you very much.